What's up, everybody, and welcome to the Wait, What Are We Talking About podcast, episode 106. My name is Brett, a.k.a. Enigma911, and today I'm joined by Billy, a.k.a. Hank 82 Billy, how are you doing today? Good, good. Are we sure it's 106? I think so. There's been a lot wow. of these, so... Would you believe that? Oh, I know, right? We're here for a special spooky episode! <laughs> Halloween Ooh. edition of the podcast. Oh, God, the lights! So we'll be talking some Halloween topics for you guys. But if you want to catch this podcast live, you can go over to twitch.tv slash Enigma 911 every Sunday, or it's up there at 8 p.m. Eastern. You join the chat. If you're a subscriber over there, we'd love to have you. If you can't catch it live, that's A-OK. It drops the very next week over on YouTube and podcast services, or it's broken out topic by topic and put as one big video and MP3 on the following Friday. Remember, guys, Extra Life 2021 is coming up right around the corner, November 20th, which is a Saturday, 24 hours of gaming, raising money for the kids over at Children's Miracle Network Hospitals, trying to help those guys out. So any way you can help us out by either watching, donating, or just spreading the word would be greatly appreciated. And last but not least, hashtag ad merch store. Get all of your swag over there, t-shirts, cups, backpacks, and more. Rep the brand and support us, and we would love you for it. We got Mrs. G and Papa Griff in the chat. Hello, hello. Saying hello to Billy as well. So, yes. Hello. It's Halloween today. Woo. It's Halloween. Um, If you're listening to this not live, hope you guys had a good holiday. (laughs) Hope you guys were safe. Hope you didn't eat too much candy and get sick. But, yes, we are going to have some Halloween-centric topics today, except for one. But, uh, Billy, what's your your topic today to kick us off? Well, to kick us off on this old uh, October 31st of uh 2021 i figured we should talk about none other than halloween Hmm. and what we enjoy most about halloween whether it was when we were a little bit older or when we were a kid what we like doing is halloween what we look forward to it with the uh with the uh, holiday approaching and just type of stuff like that cool so first i'd like to ask you um what was your like when i ask you what your favorite costume you ever wore was What do you think that one would be? Just pulling it out of the memory bank. Yikes. That's always a tough one because I know a lot of them blend together. Or, like, I don't remember. Like, I know there was a couple repeats, I feel like. Like, a Star Wars character, whether it was Obi-Wan or whatever. I feel like I did that a few times. It was Darth Maul one year. I think it was Harry Potter. I know it was Ron because I remember doing that. I'll go with Ron Weasley because I just remember... (laughs) Um, that costume, but then also it was fifth grade when I did that costume and what they would do, I think it was fifth grade. Yeah. They did like a Halloween parade around the school. So like you were just in your costumes walking around and teachers would, you know, hand out candy and stuff like that as you were going around. I just remember that being a lot of fun. And, uh, sure. There was that, it was like the year of like parties. So you had that parade at school. And then also at Taekwondo, we had the Halloween party. And, you know, the whole little loop that we would have the kids do. And the people would, uh, the judges would grade them, like, creative and scary and all that stuff. I remember acting it up because you were supposed to act your role (laughs) and do stuff. Sure, So I remember being Ron and, like, my mom had sewn, like, a little um, decoration, like, rat to my shoulder. So I was pretending that was Scabbers, and I was, like, trying to do spells on Scabbers. I remember that a lot. So I would say that one. Did you win? No, no, I definitely did not. No. <laughs> no, I would just say that one just because it was the most, like, involved with, like, activities-wise. Um, yeah. There were some other fun ones. If I'm thinking way, way back, um, there's a photo of me with my grandparents, and I'm, like, I don't know, f- five or six or something but I was Macho Man Randy Savage, so I had, like, the tassels and the <laughs> painted-on beard and everything, and that yeah. was a lot of fun. That was just fun memories. That's a that. goofy one. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have the voice down, too, when you were that young? I highly doubt it. <laughs> that would have been awesome. Oh, yeah, Grandma and Grandpa. What's oh, up? you want some candy? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got any Slim Jims? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, sure. It's a good you? one. <laughs> uh, I remember when I was younger, we used to trick or treat at my in my aunt's development over near um, Taekwondo, mm. um, and I went one year as SpongeBob. <laughs> okay. I, it was just like a cutout, like I just put my head through it, and uh, it was just this foam like cutout of SpongeBob SquarePants, and 
I thought it was pretty awesome, and I'm walking around, and I don't know why, but everyone just kept giving me love for being Spongebob, <laughs> like all the older kids and all like the parents walking by and shit, and they were like, oh my god, Spongebob, we love you, and I'm like, I am Spongebob, <laughs> this is crazy, and I was so young, and I was just a little doofus walking around as Spongebob, that mm. one, and I kept it for a while, and I ended up wearing it in like middle school, and it was much smaller, <laughs> but I bro- broke it back out for another, for another time, uh, so that one was a classic one. Um, and then I had a Spider-Man costume when I was younger, too. And after Halloween, I would wear it to bed every now and again because I would have bad dreams. And I was oh, like, well, no. if I'm just Spider-Man, like, I'm not going to have bad dreams. There you go. But then I still had bad dreams, and then I couldn't fit in it. I couldn't fit in it anymore, so then we had to get rid of it. That was mm. a sad day. Yeah. But I wore the heck out of that costume. Mm. Um, other than that, I was Peter Parker one year. That right. was really easy. I remember that one. That was a good one. Yep. That was, that was an easy costume to do, uh, but it was fun. And then um, for a, an ultimate frisbee tournament, we had our every team had like a theme they had to go as, mm-hmm. and our theme was Nickelodeon characters. Okay. Um, so then a few of my friends came up to me and they were like, "Hey, we need a Mr. Crocker for for our, uh, for our, um, we have like we had a they had two Fairly Odd Parents, they had a Timmy, and then they had the guy uh, who has like the rule book." The big macho guy. Who oh, has, um, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of the J. I don't I remember think. his name. Oh, I don't remember his name, yeah, but I he's got like him. he's got the rules. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they had them, and they were like, "We need a Mr. Crocker," and I was like, "Oh, that's easy. I can do that." <laughs> but I lost my voice because I just I kept screaming about the fairies. <laughs> but that was a blast to be him. Oh. Um, <laughs> All right. <laughs> in real time, Papa Griff coming in with a photo of the Macho Man outfit. <laughs> no way. Yeah. Well, oh my god, that's out, but yeah. <laughs> 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 Thank you for that. <laughs> that's good. That's good stuff. Uh, that's good stuff. Yeah. Nice. What are uh, what were some of your favorite activities? You said you mentioned the the Taekwondo um, mm-hmm. Halloween party. Were you a big trick or treater? Did you really look forward to going and doing that? Um, I did. So you have the you had a nice development to do it too when you were younger. Yeah, I um I do remember even doing it over in the old house in Geyser. I remember there, and that mm-hmm. I, I mean at the age I was living there, like that place was huge. I don't remember too much, like, specifically. Like, I always remember being lost or thought I was lost because I had no idea where we are, just all dark and stuff. Um, But, yeah, I think when I really started, like, or my more favorite years of going was middle school, I think it was. But my buddy John lived maybe just down the road, like a, a few minutes of a walk. But I would go with him, his brother and sister, and some other friends of theirs, and we would just all go around the neighborhood. And I think my favorite part of it was just, like, obviously hanging out with them was a blast. Being independent was cool. Like, my parents were at home. They knew where I was, obviously. But, like, just us feeling like, oh, we're on our own and going around getting candy and stuff. And then afterwards, like, just us all dumping out our candy and being like, oh, I don't want this. Do you want? Yeah, Yeah. that just was a lot of fun um, doing. And yeah it was, like especially those years where it wasn't too cold or anything like it was a comfortable mm-hmm. temperature was just the best then you had other years where it was a shit show where it was either raining yeah, it was or it was snow on yeah. the ground it's like oh this is the worst <laughs> i don't yeah. want to go anywhere <laughs> yeah there's definitely a big difference like when i was younger and doing it with my sister and my parents and then in middle school mm-hmm. i started going over to counter's development mm-hmm. and started trick-or-treat with them and that was cool just me and him like we same like type of deal like we'd always walk around that development and ride our bikes around it but then it was like halloween night and it's all dark out and you're like did we go down this road yet are we going where the heck are we like mm-hmm. how far away are we from the house but we're just going house to house getting candy and then i was gonna bring up getting back to his house and pouring it all on the floor and i'm just like oh i don't like these yeah. you take two of these i'll take one of these here <laughs> just doing a, a massive trade mm-hmm. that was good stuff did you have good any times. places that handed out those king size candy bars yep yeah. Yep. Those are always not, the I don't like, think, oh shit. <laughs> I don't think it was uh I don't think it was when I was with Connor. Okay. I think it was when I went to my aunt's development. Uh-huh. Um there's two houses, one that did the big the big size candy bars and we'd always uh hit them first so they didn't run out. Mm. And we'd like start our loop there. Um 
because it was a friend of my aunt's or whatever, and she mm-hmm. was like, hey, go to this house. Like, it's going <laughs> to give you yeah, big candy bars. And then the one across the street would give you, like, packages of peeps, like whole oh. packages of oh, peeps. Oh, shit. Okay. But I didn't, I didn't like peeps, though. Yeah. I hated those. That's probably why he was tossing them out a package of size because, <laughs> yeah. like, nobody really needs them. But I, that was still cool to be like, oh, my God, I have all these peeps. And then yeah. I ate one, and I was like, this is disgusting. And I'd give them to my uncle. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, those those were good, and that was always a good surprise. That too, and did you, when there was a bowl that said, please take one, did you only take one? I did. I only took one. I think there might have been one year where I took, like, a handful, but yeah, most of the part, I would, I would just sure. take one. <laughs> I would usually, I would usually take, like, two or three. I'd never, like, clean the bowl out, but yeah, if it was take one, I was taking, like, two or three. <laughs> I couldn't do that, but, like, I was definitely taking more than just one. Mm-hmm. Cause I made come on, come on. <laughs> that, and you know what I did hate too when somebody would be like dressed up on the front porch and oh. you couldn't tell like if they, you couldn't tell if they were just like a, an object or like a, yep. a something there, and then you go to grab in the bowl and they like stand up and they jump. <laughs> Those ones, trust issues were built there. We That's had just... we had one house in the development that was known as the like. They went hard. They made, like, haunted houses. Not really, but, like, yeah. in their garage or something, you know, around. And there was a couple years where they went pretty pretty at it. And there was one year, I remember, they had must have had, like, a couple uh, smoke machines or whatever, but a lot of fog going around. Garage is wide open. And essentially, it's just the bowl was just sitting there in front of, like, a mirror or something like that. And there was just sheets around and i think they might have had one mannequin or two but they had with the smoke also they had those flashing lights <laughs> so oh, yeah. it was like you know it kind of makes it a little bit more distorted and everybody's just standing there like i don't know man i don't want to fucking go <laughs> you go to it it's just like oh this is the worst <laughs> but it definitely was yep. a nice like variety to have like just normal 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 and then i was like oh the change of the yeah. house being spooky and stuff but yeah, that was oh, that was rough. I do remember mm-hmm. one year. I I don't remember. I, I must have been young, but um, a family friend of ours in a different development. They would do. They did. I don't know if they did it every year, but they did it a few years. They did their own haunted house at like their neighbors. It was like the cul-de-sac. Yeah, they got together and did it. And we helped them out with that. And I remember that being a lot of fun because as a kid, mm-hmm. like. I don't like spooky stuff, but I'll give it a shot and try and scare some people. And I was just being dumb the whole time. Like, I'm sure it wasn't really intimidating anybody. Um, But, like, I just remember their setup was really cool. So, like, they had, like, you know, stuff that was still, that was just, you know, decoration or whatever. But they had designed also a labyrinth of just, like, essentially black tarps. And they pumped smoke in there. And I think they might have had a flashing light. But, like, if you were brave enough, you would go through there and they'd have some people mess with you. And then mm-hmm. I remember uh, the one family friend, he dressed up as like a Viking character. But <laughs> what he would do is he was just really good at being stationary and not moving. And then every once in a while, either follow a group or just like Come enough on. slight movement to freak people out. That was a fun yeah. year when I did that, like just experiencing yeah. that side of it, um, doing the spooky stuff or the haunted house. But yeah good time yeah that reminds me too of uh i did the same thing um my old tech teacher from middle school he had a he lives in in uh, the area uh, that i live in too Mm -hmm. uh right up the road and he um he had this old like barn or like this old like long warehouse type deal and he'd get there was one year one of his students um she had had cancer Mm. um so he was he was like, oh, we're going to build a, a haunted house and we're going to charge people to go through it and we're going to use, you know, we're going to give you all the proceeds to it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I got in, she, he asked me if I wanted to come and help and like we were putting up like, uh, it was like just a basic like tiny, not tiny, but like not a huge barn. Yeah. But we made it so that it was like a labyrinth inside with those black tarps. We were putting four by fours up and then hanging tarps and then so that way like we made it a maze. So it made it much longer and much more innovative and everybody had like their own section of a room Mm. that they had to like you know we had people painting we had people figuring out what we wanted to do uh me and my friend tyler we were like working all the wiring and everything with that with like the strobe lights and all that stuff and we ended up one of the things we did we busted a fan open 
took the fan motor out so that it was you know we had something to spin yeah um and then we hooked a fishing wire to it and then we made a ghost <laughs> that we hung from the fishing wire so then when we turned the fan on it was spinning the motor and it just would whip mm. this ghost around um so that was a lot of fun and the room i had we made like this platform and we had a noose and then we had a uh like a harness mm -hmm. and my tech teacher was like you're the only guy who's like small enough to go on the harness so like it had me hooked up in and it looked like <laughs> i was hanging from the roof Jeez. but uh i had the, but i had the harness on <laughs> yeah. so i wasn't hooked to that at all and i had plenty of slack in the rope but everyone assumed that i just was an inanimate object because they walked in and they're like oh this guy's hanging from the roof right and then i just jumped down one platform i just had like a we made like a staircase uh, okay. i just jumped from one stair to the next one and like jumped in front of them and like hung from the harness <laughs> and scared so many people but we ah uh, and the uh the girl we were doing it for she was such such a great soul such a great spirit she had just recently um had surgery to uh and she had her left her left leg removed okay and she came in one day and she was like now what if this is the first room right and mr silva was like yes yeah, the first room and she's like okay now what if i just laid on the ground and like we had like a fake leg <laughs> like right here and she's like and then i just like move away and like i just don't have a leg and this guy just stared at her and he was like are you kidding she's like no i think it'd be hysterical and he was like yeah yeah no go for it okay, <laughs> I mean... and it was uh that was a riot that was good but we had it was uh because since he was a teacher he got you know the whole like whole district into it and everything and nice. when we had two nights that we like did it mm -hmm. and ran it um, that was probably my first year. Like I didn't trick or treat cause I was at his house on Halloween scaring people. Mm -hmm. But, um, we made a, a boat, boatload of money for her. Good. And I remember my dad went through the haunted house. I kept bugging him. I was like, you should go through the haunted house. He's <laughs> trying to find me. And then, um, he went through by himself and he's just going around and he's just laughing at everything. And he comes into my room and like, he's looking at me and I jumped down and he just laughed. He's like, oh, it's pretty cool. And I was like, Hey dad. And he's <laughs> like, ah. Oh. Like, hey Billy, <laughs> you like pass me and keeps walking. Uh, but no, that was that was good. Being on the, like that side of things too. Like I like going to corn mazes and and hay rides and stuff and getting mm. scared. But like scare the people because I had some funny groups. Oh yeah. That, like I would scare and they had some good reactions to it. <laughs> that was fun. Nice setting now setting all that stuff up. So That's you mentioned times. you mentioned going to the corn maze and the haunted houses. Do you have like a favorite one that you have gone to? Like just as an attendant. For corn maze, I think the the one in Skylerville was a blast. Liberty Ridge. Or no, mm, no, 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 no Skyler Farms Ridge, I'm sorry. over by, over by Saratoga Apple. Mm, mm, you know mm, the mm, apple orchard yeah, over there. They get that. Okay, gotcha. That that one I used to do in middle school and uh, when I was older too. Okay. Um, that's that's usually fun. I like corn mazes. I think I like them better than um, like hay rides because like haunted hayrides you're sitting with everybody yeah. and you're driving along and you can hear like the other hayrides uh, in front of you like mm -hmm. getting jumped and spooked and stuff so then like you're going around the bend and you're like okay something's probably going to happen right. but like you're going in a corn maze you're wide open you hear people screaming all over the place and you're like I don't know if like this turn that I'm making is leading me towards that direction or right. if it's and I feel like those workers are like they know what's going on in the corn maze like they know the ins and out of that maze so mm -hmm. if like you take a left and they know it, it's just a loop and they scare you before you take that left. They can just cut through, and then they can just get you again because they know that you're about to just go through the loop. Right. So that that's good. If you have good workers there, they'll just sit there and hassle you. Mm -hmm. So that's a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, hay rides and stuff are still good. Double M's pretty good. I've heard. I good did things. one in. I don't know if I've gone. Yeah. There. That's not bad. I've done that like twice. Mm. Um, it's not scary, scary, but like it's just it's interesting. I went with Brick John one year. Oh yeah. Oh, Oh yeah, yep. you guys are trying to get me to go. I'm like, mm, I don't know. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> and then um, there was one in Troy, I think, or Hudson Falls or something. One my sister knew about, and that one was pretty sick too. Hmm. That one was like you did a, you did a hayride, and then they like dropped you off in like the middle of the woods. Oh. And then you had like three other things you had to get through, like a haunted house, and then like a, a haunted walkway, and then stuff. So it wasn't just the hayride, and that one was pretty interesting. Huh. scary very scary <laughs> i can imagine <laughs> like when they just pulled up oh i remember the first one it was like a it was like a motel mm -hmm. and it, it was like you know the strobe lights and everything and it looked like a 
janky ass motel mm. and we get off the hayride and i'm just like okay that was fun she's like oh we got to go through all this stuff now and i was like what what <laughs> we're not done <laughs> Shit. <laughs> and then we started walking through and then that's when i started getting jumped at and scared and stuff mm. yeah and, uh mrs g in chat mentions uh our my cousin jamie she participated in one in troy or just outside of troy and she did that for a couple years she was really invested with that with her friends um yeah, I've only been to oh, yeah. it's a blast. one hayride. I don't know where it was. I went with Charlie and his family. <laughs> and uh, if, if you don't know me, <laughs> people who are listening to this podcast, scary stuff, not my thing. Um, yeah, that, the hayride was uh, rough <laughs> the entire time. Uh, I got through it, though, obviously. Um, but yeah, afterwards. Did, like, you, uh, <laughs> did you sit on the edge of yeah, the hayride? Yeah, I was on the back edge of it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> See that that was rough, but afterwards, like you didn't have that full experience, like you mentioned, of walking back and having to go through stuff. But you did have, <laughs> they did have like, like a haunted house or two, like other activities just to kind of do around or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, Charlie was like, "Oh, I'm gonna go in this haunted house. So you want to go?" I'm like, "Fuck no, no. <laughs> you no, know? no, I'm good." I think he dragged his mom with him, or she went because she loves Halloween um yeah. so like i think she went with them and they had a good time but i was just like no get me the fuck out of here <laughs> i'm done <laughs> yeah and then uh yeah as for corn mazes yeah those are a lot of fun um the place i went to liberty ridge they didn't do people in the maze as far as i know until like later mm -hmm. on in mm -hmm. at least like I, going there i have i think i have been to liberty ridge i think we took our summer camp there once okay. it's just like uh let's just go walk through a corn maze and yeah. then we got kids lost in the corn maze and we never went back <laughs> um but i'd never i've never done the, the spooky maze of that one too gotcha. but i'm pretty sure i know where it is mm -hmm. and what it looks like yeah the walkthrough of those was always fun and then that was just a oh, yeah. similar experience of like me and the cousins just going around and like independent and whatever yeah. just doing our own thing that was fun but yeah i can't imagine yeah. doing it where <laughs> tension of like someone is around tension you got flashlights on so because it's dark out mm -hmm. and you're it just makes the turns and everything you don't really recognize or remember right. anything and then on top of that like you said you got people jumping out it just right. makes a whole i'm makes sure it's it very fun, stressful but, oh yeah <laughs> do i want that <laughs> um yeah, yeah I, I think yeah, so do, experiencing it myself, not not for me. Like, I'm not going to be the first in line to go to a haunted house or go to a hayride or whatever. But I do really respect the amount of work that people put into it. Um, oh, yeah. I don't know if you know about Universal and, like, what they do every Halloween, the Halloween Horror mm -hmm. Nights. Mm -hmm. I love watching videos of those houses, like, walkthroughs, just because to see, yeah. like, obviously all the work they put into it. and experience it without experiencing it yeah know? um so this year they did a fantastic job with their houses mm -hmm. um and even last year i know obviously they had to change stuff with the pandemic but like the, still did a really good job and those those are fun to do I, I i don't know if it's a thing if i just gotta throw myself in the fire a little bit more to get used to those <laughs> or whatever, but i'm just like ah, i'm good watching it behind the screen <laughs> yep yeah, no, it's a, it's definitely interesting, and just like the choreography and the and the timing and everything. Yeah. Like even when we just did the small one at uh Sova's house, like I heard, I knew like when people would be screaming at like the next portion before oh, me. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I would hear like when somebody was coming, and then they'd have to like cut through a few like black um, tarps and whatever. Mm -hmm. So like I would anticipate that ne the next group of people would be coming, but like that whole timing and everything, it's just interesting and like seeing everybody like all the art and all the uh just the effort and everything is just for a spooky you know spooky yeah. holiday that we we did it for three nights and we worked on it since like september nice and, but like those three nights were just a, like a blast mm -hmm. and i can't even think of like you said universal and all that stuff they've been probably planning since june july oh yeah and probably even earlier like yeah. getting everything set up and getting everything ready and then it's just like one month of just yeah craziness <laughs> and like it's only those certain hours too like the rest yep. of the park is totally normal during the day and they got yeah. areas like you could walk through in the park that are just scare zones or whatever yeah like making those like it's crazy how they could fit mm -hmm. everything in there and like there's other theme parks that do it too i know six flags used to do their fright fest thing i know yeah um i know when we went to uh you ever been to six flags new england yes 
that's a, a beautiful park. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we would always do, um, we would do a trip with my aunt and uncle who just recently moved. And we'd meet my friend or my cousins who live in Massachusetts or somewhere else, New Hampshire, They're close by to New England. So they'd come by and they'd meet us and we'd do Fright Fest there. Mm-hmm. And like just even there, like their animatronics and their all their actors and everything. Uh, and we'd stay all day long. And like during the day, it was nice and relaxed. You'd see a few people here and there. They had those funny sideshows here and there. Mm-hmm. And then like six o'clock hit and like the fog machines were pumping and mm. they had the lights going and the spooky music. It's just a, it's just a cool yeah. atmosphere. It's, it's, I love Halloween, but now it's going to be finished as soon as we finish recording. Damn it. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> oh, well, we got another, just got to wait till next year. <laughs> it's got three, four more days. That's it. <laughs> ah, anything else that you like to do during the, uh, holiday season one thing i do like is watching scary movies mm. segue, oh. segue. <laughs> watching horror movies. oh horror movies scary movies so yes topic two i want to talk to billy you just call about... me a whore yes i did <laughs> <No>. <laughs> i want to talk to billy about horror movies <laughs> um <laughs> Because, yeah, I'm just intrigued of uh, what some of your favorite horror movies are and uh, if there's a specific subgenre or whatever that you kind of gravitate towards. So let's start right at the beginning. Like, what are, what are some of your favorites that you can think of? Well, I believe just for nostalgic purposes, mm-hmm. I remember my first ever horror movie I watched. Okay. And it was at, it was at Connor's house in the, the spooky time. It was in October. Um and we watched it on his uh, his mom's DVD player, and it was the original Paranormal Activity, ah, the very okay. first one. And I thought that thing was spooky as crap because mm-hmm. it wasn't like high budget, high like scarefest or whatever. The first one, it was just like little subtle like things and like oh. things that could actually happen like in the world or in the life. And I was like, oh, that's pretty spooky. And then like we were sleeping at his house that night. I was like, I could hear like a door creak or something. I'm like, oh, we're going to die. <laughs> we're gonna, that's it. Yeah. Um, so that one has a special place in my heart. I mean, they kind of dipped down um, quality wise uh-huh. when they started, you know, pumping four or five of them out because it was, it kind of turned into a cash grab, right. but it was still that, that one was definitely probably one of my favorites up there. That was an interesting one. How old is that movie? Cause you said the starting like nostalgia or classic and I'm like, I guess it that is one's old. pretty old. I'm gonna fact check this right now, but like, it's, I, just, it's got a. It's one of those things where you hear like, "Oh, this is a classic," and then you're like, "No, that just came out." And then, no, it was 20 years ago. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> yeah, it came old. out in came out in 2007. Okay, not. But that that was like when I was in no, middle I school. No, I know, I know, I know. Yeah. Not, not as bad like, as I, I was old. thinking. I was like, "Oh God." <laughs> yeah. No, it was right. came out 27. Okay. 2007. All right. 83 percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Mm, there you go. There you go. All right. So Paranormal Activity. What else you got? Um, I do like the like the original slashers. I guess you could say, mm-hmm. like the uh, Friday the Thirteenth and um, Halloween with uh, Michael Myers and yep. all that. I never got into the Scream ones. Okay. I liked his mask, but I never got into. <laughs> it seemed like everybody everything. did. That was a that was yeah, like popular that was a big costume mask. year after year. Yep. Um, but I mean, those were good. But I didn't really like get scared by those. I felt like those ones were more just like people were just getting killed. Okay. I feel like there's a certain point where mo- like they started moving more towards like jumpy jump screens, like oh, jump God, scenes those, and all that. Yeah, those fuck me up. <laughs> those <laughs> the anticipation st- of just like yeah. it keeps building and building and then finally, mm-hmm. even if it's not a scary movie, like I, I remember the big well, a prominent example I can think of is um, Pirates of the Caribbean two, where <laughs> they go they crash the ship and they're on the Cannibal Island. And there's that one cannibal in the trees, but like as they get captured, that jump scare. Oh, <laughs> I was okay. like, "Whoa!" Right in the theater, right out of my chair. <laughs> mm-hmm. it's like, I remember um, Interstellar, great movie. Oh um, yeah, that one's bad. <laughs> there was a part when they were trying to like reconnect the or like relock the spaceship on, and they it kept like 
switching the cameras from inside where it was like really loud and they're all communicating mm-hmm. to outside in space where it's just completely silent and then the the spaceship just blows up yeah. and that and i remember seeing that um when it came out in theaters with my parents Ooh. and like the original that was right when bowtie like near the time bowtie opened downtown mm-hmm. um but their movie theater for like the regular one was sold out so we had to go to the btx oh one God, with yeah. the big screen and the surround sound and <laughs> boom and i was just like it's like I'm in space and I'm now floating away. Yeah, to my death. that theater is something. Uh, I think mm-hmm. it's got like I don't know if it's just because of experience or it's like been dimmed down since it first started. But I remember, uh, what it was a Liam Neeson movie. I think it was called The Gray, where he gets like lo- uh, lost in the woods after his plane crashes and whatever. Okay. So you see the whole thing, the plane crash and whatever. But yeah, you are fucking in that plane crash. <laughs> it's just like yeah. Oh my- <laughs> yep. <laughs> at some point you think your seat's rumbling and shit yep. in the movie theater you're like wait a second here theater, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't know sometimes like i like like a happy like mix of not like a happy mix i'd like <laughs> definitely more so of like the creepy like spooky type parts of the, hor- the yeah. horror movies and like I understand a few jump scares, but like if you're only relying on the jump scares for it to be the scary part, that's what I'm just kind of like. This is yeah, this I is get ridiculous. You. Yeah, yeah. Sprinkle them in. But <laughs> sprinkle them in, just a dash here mm-hmm. and there. And that makes them even worse because then like you just stop expecting it. Yes. Whereas exactly. like if they keep forcing them down your throat, as soon as somebody's like walking down a hall or something gets quiet, you're like, oh, something's gonna jump yeah, out it- here. Sometimes you but if you tell. do something like once or yeah, you do something like once or twice after a bunch of stuff's been happening, and then all of a sudden that just that just gets you. Yeah, I've gotten to the point with some movies and like music cues. I'm like, oh, music stopped. <laughs> like, something's gonna happen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just like I know. Um, a little bit. I know Insidious. That mm. was a great horror movie um, by director James Wan. Oh, Fast uh, and Furious. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he. Uh, but like that one I felt was just like that one was creepy creepy and there was a few jump scares in it but it was very like unexpected jump scares like they were like having a conversation in like at like their dining room table and like their the cameras just flip into each person like as they're just having a general conversation about the house uh-huh. and then like it flips back over like it would be like my camera and yeah. there was just like a red like face behind the guy oh god and like <laughs> And there was already no music because it was just like a regular dialogue conversation. Yeah. But when like it flipped to that one, it was just like the, like out of tune guitar, like oh yeah, that like the strings. Thing. And I was just like, what is going on? Mm-hmm. It made me jump right out of my skin. <laughs> but uh, outside of that, I feel like it didn't rely on jumpy jump scares. It was more just like creepy mishaps that were going around. Gotcha. Hmm. Yeah, nice. I still like the slashers though, because like I mean they're classics and they're. I like a good good gore fest here and there, but mm. I feel like the like the spooky paranormal ones kind of get me a little bit more. Yeah, I can definitely picture that. I don't think I would <laughs> volunteer to see. I don't. I mean, most films that are <laughs> scary films, I don't think I would volunteer. But yeah, those ones I think would definitely be harder ones. I remember you guys wanted to go see was it Sinister. Sinister. <laughs> and I was like, mm. <laughs> Regal Cinemas blew us out. Yeah. The scumbags. <laughs> They didn't let us go see it. Yeah. Lucky you. Yeah, I was like, whoo, okay. Um, but that one seems rough. Um, but yeah, over the years, I've gotten a little better. Like, I've tried to force myself to to watch some of them. And I, I was even thinking about it this year. Um, just, like, some of the older ones. Because, like, like practical, practical effects are great. But, obviously, with the age, it might not look as, you know, realistic. So, I was like, okay, maybe that'll kind of... <laughs> keep me centered keep me grounded a little bit more so i can uh try and <laughs> stay sane um but yeah there was a couple that i had watched <clears throat> eventually over time halloween you already mentioned that one wasn't too bad from what i recall um wasn't like keeping me up at night um yeah we watched you and i together uh we watched the remake of it which wasn't that bad i was still panicking but i think it was also like we watched it on a kind of a handicapped toned down (laughs) because we did a live watch along 
so the volume had yep. to be turned real down so we didn't get like copyright struck etc etc so like yeah i didn't feel the full tension of that but i am happy i watched it it was a good film mm-hmm. um and then there was one it wasn't no it wasn't no btx movie oh, yeah, theater I'll no, tell you i would have died in theater i remember <laughs> um we talked about big john earlier um i <laughs> we were supposed to go to the movies and it's like you know what i think i'm gonna be brave let's go see it too so the whole time we're in the car, blah, 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 it too, it too, it too. I had watched the trailers like so many times. I'm like just trying to absorb as much as I can so I know. And then we finally get there and I'm like, let's watch Kingsman <laughs> instead. I'm like, hey, that's a good movie. Huh? It was, it was great. It was just like, nope, nope, not ready for this. Um, there was one that I had watched kind of randomly, like out of the blue. Uh, it was just on cable and just happened to be on. Um, that I kind of enjoyed it was Saw. Um, ah, the, Saw, is, Saw is like an interesting one. Yeah, I, I, this is because it's like a weird. slasher, but it's got a like a weird but interesting like backstory or like plot to it. Yeah, that mystery element. I think that was what intrigued yeah. me the most about it. Like, it's really gory. Don't get me wrong. And like, yeah, it was like, oof, okay, rough. But um, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. I like the really the mystery element of it and the whole like who's Jigsaw, what's going on right here. I don't know if the mm-hmm. puppet ever shows up in the first one. Do you want to play a game? <laughs> but like I think that's what kept me going. Have I watched any other ones since? No. But I was still like, you know what? I'm gonna sit down and watch this <laughs> instead of changing. I think they just came out with a new one. Yeah, Spiral with, uh, with Chris Rock. Yeah, I don't think it was that great. <laughs> from what i heard but i, I don't know i never saw it mm-hmm. i didn't expect for it to be that great but i mm-hmm. was kind of like hey, that's, that's cool yeah a little different on it but i didn't see it mm-hmm. yeah yeah i forgot about it that was a good i saw that in the theater so that was good i mm-hmm. told a few kids to uh shut the fuck up in the movie theater yep yep <laughs> just they were reacting too much or were they like talking or no it was we were in the back we were in the back row and uh they were talking through the trailers which annoyed me but i was mm. like it's just the previews whatever yeah. like and and they were mostly like horror movie previews so i didn't really care yeah, much usually. about like being <laughs> filled in um so i didn't really care but then like the movie started and like they're like doing like the overhead cinematography of like the city oh, and all yeah. that and you're trying to get some backstory and everything and like the narrator's talking or whatever, and like they're still just con- like conversating. Mm. And like I leaned forward and I was like, "Hey guys, do you mind like just <laughs> kind of quieting it down?" And then leaned back, and then they didn't. Uh-huh. And then like two minutes later, I saw a few people looking around, like looking back at him. So I was like, "Oh, I'm good." That means shut the fuck up. <laughs> and they just looked at me, and I go, "Yeah." And then I just sat back down, and they didn't say a single word the rest of the time. There you go. I don't know how they got in either, because they were. It, it was a rated R movie, uh, and they looked like they were like thirteen or fourteen, and there was no parents around them. I'll tell you, if it was Regal Cinemas, they would have damn near arrested yeah. them. <laughs> exactly. Oh boy. Um, let's see. Papa Griff has mentioned some in chat, so he said uh, you got to watch the Chuck. Actually, that was one I was thinking of watching this year. And I was even talking with a lady about it. She's like, are you serious? Like, <laughs> dolls are not her thing in the first place. But I was like, yeah, because... Dolls are creepy. At least yeah. I can punt it. Like, that's my thinking. Like, if worse came to worse, yes, he's got a knife. Yes, it's terrifying. But at least, <laughs> at least against You him, could send him a good 20 send, yards. Yeah. I'm not sending Jason. I'm not sending Freddy no. anywhere. At least no. I have this self-defense. I know I could do something. That's like... Freddie and Jason, that's like just kicking Sam Romanzo and he's just eating it. Like you give him all your might with a roundhouse yeah. kick and he just goes, Oh, that's good. Yeah. And then you're just demoralized. Whereas, yeah, Chucky, you could really just yeah. send that guy good. So I did good. want to watch that. I might still give it a try. One thing that sucks is obviously streaming services are a thing. So I was like, Okay, let's just generally search where it is. <sighs> My luck. It's on Hulu. I don't have Hulu. It's on Amazon. Okay, it's like four bucks, whatever. The shitty part of it is I have Peacock for, you know, wrestling and all that stuff. Every other goddamn Chucky movie is on Peacock except for the first one. And I'm like, ah, come on. You just, oh, you son of a bitch. <laughs> so there was that. Um, let's see. <clears throat> he mentioned a movie called The Birds. Have you ever seen? Oh, I wrote a paper. I wrote a paper on the birds. Okay, he said, "Watch That's the birds." A good Watched movie. it again last week. That's 
He's talking about the. I'm assuming the uh, the classic, the older one. Let me see one that came out. <laughs> Everything's a classic to Philly. <laughs> a classic. <laughs> uh, yep, 1963. Okay. What's the like premise Much, of that one? That one, it's uh, some lady. Uh, this okay. is like a year and a half. I wrote the paper again. Um, some lady moves into like a new town, and uh, like this. It's just this, like, it starts off very slow where, like, one bird. I think she might have been, like, a bird, like, keeper or something. Okay. And then she left for a new town. <clears throat> and, like, she started meeting this new guy. And then, like, she's driving. I remember she's driving a dinghy boat or, like, a fisherman boat. Okay. Like, across this way to go to, like, some other town that's across the water. Um, and as she's doing it, like, a bird, like, flies in and, like, pecks at her head. Um, and that's, like, the just the beginning of it. And then, like, as the movie progresses, like, the bird's slowly and slowly just like start um coming more in quantity and like start getting more vicious oh and there's one point where like they flood like this they had to evacuate a school and like there's a bunch of like birds just flying through and they like take down like these power lines and cut the power in the town and everything and like they're flying through i know there was one the guy that she like went to go meet or like hang out with they're like boarded up in their house and everything and like birds are flying down through the chimney and everything And I wrote a paper on it about how it was like she disrupted the environment and like the humans were also disrupting the environment with just like the use of gas and the use of fossil fuels and everything. Mm -hmm. And like her joining this town was like the tipping point of we're past the point of um, like being able to no return. Yeah. Yeah. Of like being able to what's the word there to successfully like utilize their resources oh, like her okay. being there put them over the point where it's like uh now we're like dangerously using quantities okay and then uh so the birds aggressively became more and more angry and like tried to push him out of the sound which she ends up leaving and like the last scene is like they're driving away and like the birds are just like all like engulfing um this the screen and like they're just kind of taking over oh. weird movie huh all right. It is a horror movie, but like it's not like scary, scary. Interesting. But it's it's very intriguing, and mm-hmm. there's a lot of birds, and there's a lot of pecking. <laughs> good music in it too. Good music. Mm. Uh, the birds, yeah. Let's see. Papa Griff brings up: Is Alien a horror movie? I would say yes. I th- heard that the first one is a lot more terrifying than the rest. I've never seen the Alien movies. You have not. Okay. I feel like I've I seen. Have. But <laughs> I saw Prometheus, which I think was supposed to be like a prequel to yeah, yeah. it or something. Yeah. But I never got into the, the alien movies. They're on HBO, I think. And mm-hmm. they're sitting in my queue. Because <laughs> I'm like, oh, these I should watch. Um, but yeah, I think the first one is more horror. And then it goes into sci-fi thriller. That's a weird thing, too. Like thriller, horror, like does it count? Yeah. And to me, I think so. If you feel any like tension scary yeah sure i mean i get it's a um, blanket term maybe that's the right thing to say or not the right thing to say um but yeah i would consider that if you feel tense and you get scared at points yeah it could have elements of horror or whatever maybe that's mm-hmm. not going to win the horror award but you know <laughs> yeah and maybe it's not like it's not like they sat down for this movie and they were like okay this is going to be a scary movie right it was more so they were like this is going to be an adventure movie mm-hmm. but there's obviously aliens and there's obviously things and parts that's going to be scary right i guess that might be like the difference to it too but because yeah. like with like paranormal activity and insidious they're like yeah this is going to be a scary movie whereas mm-hmm. alien they're like oh, we're telling a story but obviously the story we're telling is a bit scary so there's right. going to be those parts i don't know but yeah, I should. Pre- I, I'd like to watch those too. Mm. Did you ever watch? Um, I think it was The Mist. Was what it was called. I think I've heard of it. Okay, it was this mist falls on the town, and these people are like trapped in a grocery store, and then they gotta like figure out what's going on and escape the mist and where. I remember seeing ads for that all the time when it was first coming out. That scared me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I do. I just looked it up because mm. it did sound familiar. Mm. Yes. Yes, yes. I've never seen it, but I know exactly what you're talking. It's a Stephen King book. Mm. That's why it sounded familiar. Gotcha. Yes. Yeah. Very interesting. Was yeah. that a movie or was it a? Yeah, it's a movie. Yeah, okay. that, that was how I, I know it. <clears throat> there was. Uh, didn't they do like a series on a Stephen King book once too? Probably. A TV series. I feel like a lot I think of was, his stuff has been. I think it was The River. Okay, that sounds familiar, but I don't. Know. 
Yeah, there's a bunch of stuff I want to try, but then it's like, are you brave enough, or how is this going to affect you afterwards? Like, um, I want to watch. Yeah. This is probably another one that's like, oh, that's not horror. I want to watch Quiet Place. That is a very good movie. Mm. I want to. Yeah, I've heard that's great it. things about that. I want to watch. There that. is. It is scary. Yeah, because it's quiet but the like, whole time. <laughs> yeah, but like the jump scares aren't like a vicious like we're trying to scare the shit out of you jump scares okay. it's more like uh you can tell like the plot is thickening and things are happening and then like you know something jumps out or something like it's no longer as quiet gotcha but that was that's written and directed really really well mm -hmm. especially with like just how it's quiet mm -hmm. it's a very quiet movie right. <laughs> and i went and saw the second one the second one was very good too oh, yeah nice yep second one uh, not often you go and see a sequel and you're like oh that actually had good <laughs> value to the first movie, but yeah, mm -hmm. it's it was a good series there. Mm -hmm. I would definitely suggest it, but I do think you would get scared. Okay, yeah. but I think you would enjoy it. I right. think you would appreciate it. All right. Uh, there's another one. It's um, I can't remember which one it is. It's Key or Peel, but one of them's gone to directing recently. I think oh, it's, this um, is yes, uh, this is us, and then he made another one. Yes, um, those I'm kind of intrigued for, oh, by. Too. Get out. Yes, get out. Get out yeah, was I've heard first great things that about one. Get Out. And then... I saw Get Out in theaters, and that is very, very good. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's. It's like it's creepy. It's okay. not scary. Okay. Like I would say, Quiet Place is scarier than Get Out. Interesting. But like the overall like theme and consensus of Get Out is very, very creepy. Mm -hmm. It ends in a very bashful way, or like a firework explosiony way. Mm -hmm. Like, all of a sudden, like, you have this very nice plot and everything, and then it all kind of just, like... <laughs> okay. The last, like, 20 minutes, you're just like, holy shit, what's going on here? <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Um, but I haven't cool. seen his other one, which was This Is Us or Us or whatever. Yeah, I've heard, I've heard good things about that one, too, but... Yeah, I haven't seen that one. He also just did, uh, he just executive produced a remake of uh, Candyman. Yeah, yeah, I think I heard positive stuff about that one, too. Hmm. Uh, I don't remember. Hmm. I kind of just was like, oh, this is happening. And right. I think it was like during or before the pandemic or something. So then I kind of just like all things movie. Yeah. You kind of just stopped hearing about them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Movies only existed for me because HBO, they did the day and day stuff. <laughs> I was like, yep. All right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. Let's see. Yeah. No, Get Out, Get Out is definitely very good. Okay. Very good. Uh, Papa Griffin Chat asks, vampires, scary or no? I think they can be. Nah. No? No, nah, they can't. It's just garlic. You just <laughs> have some garlic bread. Okay. And that's it. Like, those guys are wimps. No. I'll say, I remember, <laughs> creepy. I remember the Van Helsing movie with Hugh Jackman when that came out. Mm -hmm. Those kind of scared me. <laughs> I don't, uh, yeah. yeah. I was like, ooh. I mean, they got the capes and, like, they're, they're eating. Well, it, okay. I think if it's the more, like, Dracula traditional vampire, no. I don't mm -hmm. think so. But there have been some yeah. adaptations of vampires, and I'm like, <laughs> Okie dokie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's see. He also mentions Maximum Overdrive. He thinks Jeff talked about that one in the past. I don't remember that one. Maximum Overdrive. Hmm. It sounds like when uh when uh Patrick and SpongeBob got into the uh, Krusty Krab <laughs> mobile <laughs> and then uh, in the SpongeBob movie and they kicked it into Maximum. And then also, they brought up Hellraiser. Mrs. G says Hellraiser oh. was very scary. Pinhead. <laughs> Pinhead. I don't he know looks that one. stupid, <laughs> but no, I haven't. I have no idea what it's about. <laughs> oh, okay. Hellraiser is a truck runs itself and traps people. <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh. All right. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. Hmm. I'm trying to think of other examples of things that i've seen that i'm like oh god no i don't want to oh okay i can think of one that freaked me out advertisements when they popped on um it's i think it's called mirrors is simply the title but i remember the the, the trailer that i saw on, you know on tv over and over again but essentially it's like the mirrors or something in the mirrors is sentient and Essentially, what happens in the last scene of the trailer is it's a woman in front of the mirror. She's, you know, doing her makeup. She's getting ready for, I think she was taking a bath or whatever. So she does that, blah, 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 blah. She proceeds to walk to the bath off camera, but her reflection stays. Oh, stayed. 
And then she's in the tub, you see her and whatever. And then it goes, it cuts back to the mirror and the mirror is just reaching around to its front jaw uh, and starts pulling. And, just, and then you yeah. see her like freaking out in the bath. I'm like, no, no, nope. Yeah. <laughs> uh-uh. Yeah, mirrors freak me out. <laughs> How do they work? That's just, I don't know what's going on in there. It's a whole different world. Yeah. That one was, oh, I don't know. <laughs> You got any other uh, shout-outs of ones that <clears throat> you liked or maybe are looking forward to or maybe even didn't meet your expectations? I don't think I've, any of them are, I'm looking forward to. I haven't really heard much of horror movies as of late. Okay. I know they remade Scream, Yeah. Um, but I had no... Was that a no remake or character. a sequel? Uh, aren't they the same thing? <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I do know that came out. I mean, it's kind of. I feel like it's just the same story, except with new casts. Fair. And then, yeah, I don't know. I wasn't really interested in that. They remade Ghostbusters too, or they had a sequel. It's coming for out. I'm looking forward to that. And yep. I'm not gonna lie, as a that kid, one, that one looks goofy. One freaked me out. <laughs> yeah. Paul Rudd's in that one too, isn't he? Yeah, he is. Yeah, he's yep. some guy in the neighborhood they're friends with, and it's like yeah, a, it's some, like a sequel because they're. Yeah, because they they're like the kids and they find the boat, the or they find the car, or whatever. Of the original, and then mm-hmm. I don't know if you've seen the most recent trailer. I saw it when I went to see. Didn't like somebody pick up the phone Bill from Murray. the original, or yeah, they Bill call, Murray. They find yeah. the phone, the ad on YouTube. It's like an old video for Ghostbusters. Yeah. They call it, yeah. and Bill Murray's like, "We're closed." <laughs> 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 yeah that's that I, that one i'm interested in mm-hmm. like scream i wouldn't be interested in because i feel like it's just a cash grab of like oh these guys are younger and like this guy's back and he's trying to kill the younger people from who he tried to kill originally mm-hmm. and then they just get stabbed a bunch but like I, I think they could do some interesting stuff with ghostbusters especially with how things have changed in the editing and, and movie making world mm-hmm. like that's a very interesting concept to uh bring back to life yeah from when they originally made it yeah, Papa Griff says in chat, these reboots got to go, have an original idea. I get that. I get that for sure. I think it's it's a delicate balance because, like, especially more recently, yeah, there have been a lot of reboots, remakes, etc. It's a, it's a fine line. I think if it's the same film, like just fresh coat of paint thrown on it, then it's like, mm, was that necessary kind of thing? But I like if they do change something a little bit to make it its own. Um, like, I know le- yeah. <laughs> this is a callback, but I know leading up to the Power Rangers movie, I was giving that a lot of shit because they were changing <laughs> things left and right. I'm like, Alpha 5 does not look anything like him. But walking out of it, like, I did enjoy it. And it's sad that they won't, unfortunately, get a sequel or follow-up because it didn't yeah. perform well. Um, but, you no, know, some things I think do well. And... That's another thing, too. Sometimes people are too harsh. Like, oh, this didn't match the original at all. Like, yeah. um, like okay, I'm probably going to get a lot of internet hate for this one if anybody does watch or listen to this episode. But Death Note, so it's originally the anime. And then Netflix had their own, like, live-action interpretation or whatever. When it came out, everybody was, like, fucking just <laughs> trashing on it. And I gave it a watch, like, maybe a year ago. Because, like, yeah, I got some time, whatever. And I actually enjoyed it. Was it the best thing since sliced bread? No, the acting wasn't, you know, superb or whatever. But I, I, I enjoyed it. Um, so I don't know. It's it, yeah, <laughs> delicate balance. Original ideas are great, but I don't think it's a bad thing to go back to the well to bring it to a new audience, kind of thing. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, fucking. There's other pl- plenty of other media that, like, how many Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle stories have we gotten or different adaptations of that? And it's not a bad thing. Some people still are like, oh, this isn't my Turtles. Well, no, it's made for a different audience, <laughs> you know? If you like it, great. But, no, it's it's different for a reason. <laughs> but, nah, I get it. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, boy. Is this another? So how did the lady gb's do oh how did the ladies ghostbusters do sorry had to <laughs> how'd the ladies ghostbusters do now this is another don't they kind of ruin the legacy if they stink see that's the delicate game they play too because you're like we want to revisit this to bring it back to a new audience but 
yeah, if the movie sucks, tarnishes the reputation a little bit, or does it boost the original? Could also have that effect. Like, this one's really good because this one's really ass. Mm-hmm. I mean, Dragon Ball Z had that shitty movie, <laughs> and people still love Dragon Ball Z. So it's like, ew. yeah. Um, as far as I know, the uh, women's Ghostbusters wasn't received super well. I know some people liked it. Um, nothing wrong with that, obviously. Um, but yeah, I think that was just the one, like, wasn't a direct sequel. Didn't, it referenced a little bit of the past, but I don't think there was any returning mm-hmm. characters. I didn't watch it, so I could be wrong. This I one that's it. coming out seems to be more of a sequel sequel because it's down the line and everything. Um, so yeah. And Bill Murray. And Bill Murray. New audience can go watch the classic. That's a th- Yeah, they absolutely could. You could be just like, here, go watch this. But I think it's a motivator if you get something yeah. new to then be like, oh, there's To more? go and check out, yeah. Yeah, and mm-hmm. I, 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 like I said, I totally get both sides of the conversation, but maybe that's like your, what's the phrase? Um, I don't know. <laughs> so, like your foot in the door. That gets your foot in the door. Oh, there's this new thing that looks kind of cool. And then, yeah, it's just the more on top of it. For example, like you could go with even superhero stuff. Like, oh, the Superman movie? Well, okay, maybe a different example. The Batman movie was really cool. I'm going to go watch Batman, or I want to go read more comics about Batman and learn more. And you could go off that, you know, kind of stuff. Yeah, Yeah, there's horror movies. There's topic two. (laughs) All right. Nice. All right. So moving on to topic three, a little bit of a change of pace. Um, no more Halloween chat. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to, Billy, I wanted to chat with you about something I know you've been doing for a little while, but you brought up on the podcast last time you were on, and that's writing. Um, you've been doing it for a little while, um, and I kind of wanted to pick your brain up as to like why you're doing it, inspirations, and like what you're trying to get out of it. Um, I know a little bit, because obviously we've talked off stream and off podcast about it, but I don't think I've fully dug deeper to kind of figure it out. So I just kind of want to do that. So Billy, um, what got you into writing? (laughs) Well, I used to enjoy writing when I was younger. Like I would just type at the computer and just write like stupid stories Mm -hmm. or like uh, draw like comics at school or whatever and make like little tales and everything. Um, But obviously that was never really you know, nothing really came of that. Just kind of did it as an enjoyment and something that I liked. Um, but I really got into it when I was at Cortland. Okay. And I was taking my science and physics and math classes and all that. Um, and I'd usually have a, a slot open once I got, like, my semester quota done um, for those classes. So when I took when I had that spot open, I would usually take, like, a writing class because I was like, oh, these are easy. And my math and physics classes i'm gonna probably get like b's and c's and i was like so let's go get an a in like mm-hmm. a writing class and boost the gpa up so that's when i really started doing it and it took me a few years but then like i got into a uh, a short fiction writing class okay and uh we had to write four like short stories um and we would bring on we'd like print out copies and bring it in for everybody and we'd all just read each other's stories and like that kind of atmosphere where everybody else was creative writers as well and like they'd read my stories and they'd pick up on things that like I didn't realize I did sometimes and then other times I deliberately did and had it with like an idea of why I did it and then they'd come in and be like oh this is an idea of why you did it of why I did it and it was completely you know something different or they hit it right on the head that was a very interesting aspect to just see how I could take something and write something with an idea or with a meaning in my head and then bring it to a new audience and see other people either one figure out my meaning or two figure out a different meaning that also makes a lot of sense so that's a very interesting aspect of it and that's when i kind of really started to think oh, i should probably just go and do this because i get excited about it so i went and started doing that cool so do, yeah. you, do you like is it just like short short stories or is it longer form content or that's, is it kind of a mix? that's definitely that's definitely my favorite is short stories i Uh feel like i'm definitely the best at that and i have the most amount of fun with doing that because i've taken like three or four like writing fiction short story type deal classes Mm -hmm. um and it's just like an interesting concept because it's uh i wouldn't say it's like cookie cutter how you make each short story but there's like a 
uh, a similar way you go about it like instead of because you have like a, it's like compressing a whole novel into like four or five pages um and instead of like my favorite thing to do with them is instead of um having them come to resolutions because they're so short i don't have a lot of time to like write out a full resolution yeah. so i love like you remember those in uh, in English in high school when you'd have the plot lines or the plot graphs, yeah, and you'd have like the rising action and then the climax and then the falling action and then the resolution. Mm -hmm. When you're writing a short story, I like to have you get the rising action, and then climax end of book. No okay. falling action, no resolution. Like the most important thing, have that just happen right away at the end, and kind of leaves the reader to just be like hang on a second, like, everything that has just been explained beforehand has now just been changed because of, like, a paragraph mm. at the end. And then that opens up, like, conversation, discussion, um, ideas of what I meant by it or where to go with it. So that's a very interesting concept, and I've definitely wrote, written the most short stories. One I'm not good at is, like, I'm not very good at writing poetry. Okay. Poetry is tough, poetry is tough to write. And I'm in a poetry class this year, because I figured I should take a poetry class before I graduate, like a intense poetry class, mm -hmm. and it's like sixteen, seventeen hundred British poetry. Oh. Okay. And it's just, it's just disgusting. Mm. I just hate it. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, it's also like interesting because some of them are writing about like, um, like the uh, like nature and like the destruction and uh, what's, what's that one thing? Uh, there's some law that came into place that I can't remember what it was right now. Um, but, like, they were, like, tearing down, like, uh, trees and all that to start making more land because people started having babies, a lot of babies. Mm -hmm. They needed more plots of land, more resources and all that. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting to write or to see how they wrote about that when they were younger, like, that many years ago. Right. But it's, like, trying to decipher the the British of it is kind of kind of tough. And poetry does like it intrigues me but i'm i'm not good at it <laughs> <laughs> trying to write it i enjoy it and i think that like a nice poem by like lydia davis or something i'm like wow that's this was very interesting this was very well written but then like i try to write a poem and i'm like mm, this just sounds odd gotcha. so short story definitely i have a blast with writing yeah. i have one published short story and i just recently um or not applied. I just recently sent in another short story um, to the same journal that I have my first one applied to because they do a competition each year at U Albany to get a publish uh -huh. okay. or a publication. Uh, so I just set a second one in. Um, that's exciting. It's about some teddy bears <laughs> that live in that live in a picturesque forest, and then one of the teddy bears, like they all help each other out, like building their houses and plotting their land and like getting resources and everything. And then this one teddy bear finds some jelly beans and, like, this tree that, like, has all these jelly beans falling. And he starts using that as currency. And mm -hmm. he's like, you guys got to find, if you want my wood, you got to go find me some of these jelly beans because I really like these motherfuckers. So you mm -hmm. got to go give me some more. And they're like, but we used to, like, always just give each other everything. And he's like, no, but I, I'm not going to give you this now until you give me some jelly beans. Mm -hmm. And then all the other teddy bears start, like, going crazy trying to find these jelly beans <laughs> to start figuring out because they used to have everything for them. Right. And now nobody's given anything away. And then they all turn into the big climax at the end of it is they all turn into grizzly bears and they rip each other apart and destroy their home. And then it just ends like that. Wow. So that's very, very type, very fun to write stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Cause I can have a lot of fun with like uh, the ending of it. Hmm. So do you yeah. have certain inspirations that you look towards or kind of find inspiration from? Um, kind of, I like, I like when I have, like, a an issue in my own life, I guess. Okay. Or, like, not my own life, I guess. But, like, I have questions about life mm -hmm. or, like, things that don't make sense. So then I'll just write them in a non, like, a non-actual way. Yeah. But it's an actual way, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, it's a way they're represented, like, with, I don't really get the whole we made up all this type of money and all this type of stuff. I don't know why we all can't just live on the world and just hang out. Um, so then I was like, well, why don't I write about a bunch of teddy bears that do just live and hang out? And then they get this idea of like demand, supply and demand. And it turns them into something other than teddy bears. Mm -hmm. um, 
So it's like, I guess it's stuff like that. I wrote one also of two people walking up a, uh, or taking a hike. I, ironically, I thought about it while I was taking a hike. <laughs> but they're taking a hike and it's just two people who had never met each other. And they're just like questioning like life and why they're going about life and what they're doing and everything. And then like as they move closer to what they believe is the resolution of the meaning of life, which is something no one will ever figure out. Um, the mountain like keeps changing and adding new like difficult scenarios for them to get through or like somebody trips and gets injured or somebody falls off as they're like getting deeper and deeper into what they believe life is and everything um, and one of them ends up getting killed falls off the mountain so the other guy follows him by himself and it's like his internal dialogue of trying to figure out what he's made of this of this hike and all of this discussion of life and then he gets to the top and it's like this creepy looking dude at the top, kind of like a Grim Reaper-esque guy who asks them what he has figured out. And they like, he kind of discusses what he thinks life is. And then he says that it's not good enough. And he pushes him off the mountain <laughs> and he falls down the mountain. And instead of him dying, he like wakes up and he's like going to go hike up the mountain again with this guy. Like oh. nothing had happened before. Okay. And it kind of is just like a repeating cycle of mm. them going up. So it's like, I like... My inspiration is to make somebody think and to make somebody, like, sit back and not be finished with the story when they're finished with the story. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's my big goal, is to have something that they finish reading and they're like, hmm, that was interesting, instead of like, ah, oh, cool, and then, like, put the book down and walk away. they got to be like, hmm, hang on a second. Interesting. So yeah. along with making people think, do you have any other goals, um, you know? for this do you just want to keep doing this for yourself or um is a book i think a like possibility or i think the creative aspect of it i like doing for myself and i like like the uh the publication um uh competitions they're good for like resume boosting and like you know i go um for like a master's in teaching i'll be like hey i got two pieces of work like published you can take a look at them and right. read them and see my writing um, I would love to write a collection of short stories and get that published. I've been talking to two of my professors who both have editors that can actually edit it out and get it to a publication. Um, I talked to Danny Bensangwe as well, too, because he oh, got shit. a book published. Oh, okay. Yep. Yep. He wrote one um, in between undergrad and graduate. Hmm. Um, during COVID, he just had a free time and he wrote, um, I think it was, I don't remember exactly what it is, so I'm not going to explain what it is because <laughs> right. I don't exactly... But uh, I talked to him about, like, he would send, you know, copies back and forth, and they got a publication, and then he actually got it listed on Amazon, which you can go and buy. And I was like, that's really interesting. Maybe like, I should go and give that a girl, or give that a whirl. Yeah. So that'd be a lot of fun, but that's more just, like, for myself. Mm -hmm. In the grand scheme of things, uh, I think writing is a very, very good way to just express yourself and to be able to... Uh, say things that you wouldn't be able to say or don't want to say or wish you could keep saying forever but you're going to forget so write something down um i took a class last semester called expository writing and it was on zoom with a 73 year old professor named jeff who is the smartest man i've ever met um but it was just like 20 of us in a zoom call and we'd have assignments writing about just like situations in life that have impacted us or that have made us who we are. And our first, our first assignment was writing like three quality events that have bettered us as a person and three uh, tough events that have challenged us as a person. And then the assignment following that was taking one of those, one of those six and writing about it in the third person. Ooh. So you kind of took yourself out of the situation and you explained like Billy did this and went and yeah, this happened to Billy and all that. So yeah. it made you like reflect on it more. And then we'd have to read these mm. very intrusive pieces to the class. And that was, that was a very interesting topic and very interesting class. And like, that was what made me open up. That's when I really started to believe that like, my writing is good and it can have impacts on people. Mm -hmm. I wrote a piece, um, my third person um, scenario, I wrote about um, the height of my depression when I was like really, really deep into it at Cortland um, my sophomore year. 
and I wrote about that and like my struggles with it and what I felt internally and like what led to it and what I did after and all that. Mm -hmm. um, and then like two or three weeks later, like two other people wrote anonymous diaries about their own experiences with depression. They're like, I've never been able to like formulate my words about this, but like I listened to Billy do it with his stuff. And it's like, and it made me want to give it a try and made me want to like talk about my own things. And like seeing that, like that's, probably the only time i ever like shed a tear in a college class i was like oh my gosh like i did something and wrote something and it empowered somebody else to be able to to stand up and talk about their own things right so that is also why i'm like super excited to just go in to go into teaching it's because like people can express themselves with writing and you need to be a good writer to like you know do your resume to be able to answer emails to be able to do all types of stuff for jobs instead of just like figuring out why you know of mice and men is a good book or not like <laughs> right. it's teaching them how to be you know a good writer and how to benefit them but it's in a way that it's in a you know a scholastic educational way but it's definitely a good treat to have and definitely a good uh, something i love so yeah that's good it's good stuff definitely all right oh, last yeah. question for me is there anywhere like we could find these published works or read them one of my published works is on my instagram mm -hmm. um on my in my bio that leads you to the um to my first publication that i got last year okay. and then if the one that i just sent in um gets published again it would be on the same website it's called arch journal okay yes arch journal um and it's just like a scholastic journal just with um uh, college kids writings that mm -hmm. get published into there um, but that's where you can find that and then at some point when I do probably over the winter and um, before I get into my master's program I'd love to finish because I have like six or seven short stories that I have written that are like finished mm -hmm. like I have them from start to completion but I'd I always like to edit them and like change different things and add new parts or take parts away so they're not like finished finished but like the outline of them are done. The heavy lifting of it is done. And I'd love to get eight or ten, probably ten, and just put them in a book. And my friend drew me um, a cover for uh, a book that I would one day have. So I'd love to be able to, that would be very interesting to just have that as my cover. Yeah. And then, like, have ten stories of them in. Um, that's probably definitely one of the bigger goals for once I, once I graduate is to get something published before I'm bogged down by master's <laughs> program and learning how to be a teacher and all that. Right. Um, right. That's good. Very nice. Yeah. Yeah. Very it'll be cool. exciting. Very cool. Yeah. All right, everybody. This has been another episode of the Wait, What Are We Talking About podcast. My name is Brett, a.k.a. Enigma911, and today I was joined by Billy, a.k.a. BHank82. Once again, Billy, thanks for hopping on, man. I appreciate it. My cat hopped on, too. Yeah. She's been here the whole time. Off cam, but that's okay. She is passed Off. out. Uh, turn. She is passed out. <laughs> she had some catnip today, so she's a little, she's a little sleepy. Oh. Oh, big yawn. <laughs> you guys can catch this podcast live over on twitch.tv slash enigma911 every Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern. You join the chat like Papa Griff and Mrs. G did today if you're a subscriber over there. We oh, yeah. Get in on the conversation. If you can't catch it live, that's A-OK. -okay. It rolls over on YouTube and podcast services the very next week where it drops uh, topic by topic and as full, oh, boy, and in full on Friday uh, as MP3. And video format. Jeez, I am ruining this outro. <laughs> <laughs> Extra Life Weekend is coming up November 20th. Woo! That is a Saturday, 12 noon Eastern. Uh, 24 hours of gaming, raising money to help out Children's Miracle Network hospitals. Any way you can help us out, either watching, donating, or spreading the word would be great. Give us your money. Help those kids out. And then last Help but not least, out. merch store. Get all of your swag over there, t-shirts, cups, backpacks, and more. Rep the brand, support us, and we will love you for it. Billy, thanks again for being on the podcast, man, especially on your Halloween. <laughs> well, thank you. well, thank you for allowing me to be on your podcast on Halloween. You're welcome. Anytime. Anytime. Chat viewers, thank you guys for giving this a watch, giving it a listen, and we will see you guys on the next one. Take care. Do I get a holiday pay today? Yeah, yes. <laughs> Time and a half. Yes. <laughs>